My name is Brian Goatee. I am a research geologist with the Arizona Geological Survey. Landslides in particular, you know, they require water is a primary factor for them actually occurring. Their frequency is really depends on the region in which they occur, how much water is being provided or added to the, the area where it can fail. Um, so in some areas, landslides and mass wasting features can be more frequent than other areas. But a feature like the Marcus landslide is typically pretty rare, but it still shows us, it tells us a story of factors that can cause landslides and other types of features like landslides to occur. For like a landslide to occur, you have to have loose material. Uh, you can't have a, a landslide or a rock fall or a debris flow without the loose material that's primed and poised and ready to be sent down slope. Uh, so usually the factors that are required to loosen the deposits are vegetation, uh, fractures and joints, and breaks in the rocks, and maybe even a little bit of, of ice wedging during some overnight freezes. So all of these things can actually break up the rock and loosen it into smaller pieces. And once it's poised and primed through those sort of mechanical uh, weathering processes, then the erosion can occur with the help of gravity and water and maybe a little bit of vibration to actually send that loose material down a slope. For a catastrophic landslide, you would need a sort of a, a proportional catastrophic amount of rain to occur in a short amount of time. That would be the worst case scenario where you have a monsoon dumps down two or three inches of rain in an hour. That provides thousands of pounds, even maybe even millions of pounds of water within one or two hours, and that can trigger a landslide. Uh, but you can also get them uh, several weeks after the water has percolated into the soil and loosened it up, and you know perhaps some kind of uh, other trigger mechanism, like even a helicopter has been known to trigger landslides and rock falls. And so you can have a variety of trigger mechanisms that actually can cause that material that's already weak and unstable to become an active geologic hazard. If, you, if you're next to a steep slope, uh, then you're at risk for some type of slide, slump, or creep, or even a debris flow. All of those conditions can exist there. Um, if you have a lot of vegetation, uh, that means that there's a lot of loose material. If you have an area that can collect a lot of water and hold it, that is also at risk for failure. So there are a lot of places throughout the state that actually have all of these conditions that can be met in just one place. Mm -hmm.